What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Okay, I made a thing. Well, I, I usually make a thing on this channel, so I guess that's not like a huge surprise. But I think you're not only gonna like how this particular thing looks, but how cheap and easy it is to get the same results. All right, I'll stop dancing around the whole thing. Behold, my Viking axe of pillaging. Now you can look striking while striking fear into the hearts of your enemies and innocents alike. Yours today for only $14.99. More of a hatchet, I suppose. Though a Viking hatchet of pillaging doesn't really have the same ring. So it's a Viking axe of pillaging. I'll just two hand it like this. Seriously though, I did end up spending under $15 for this whole project. Now, of course, that's not taking into account the materials I already have and the tools that I have around, so your mileage may vary. But still, I am super stoked to show you how easy this is and how to get the same results. So without any further ado, let's level up this skill. Shaping the head. As I said before, this project cost me roughly $15, all of which went towards this hatchet. Though well made, it's a bit dull in both appearance and in cutting abilities. Seriously, I don't know if they just think you're gonna force of will through a log when you buy that thing or what, but it was super dull. Just gonna, just gonna bludgeon your firewood into submission. Now to get this Walmart special to look more like a Viking axe, I wanted to thin out these sections of the head. I sketched in the shape I'm going for with a pencil, then locked it in with a Sharpie so that it doesn't wipe away as I work with it. Even just drawn in, this design has a way more aggressive feel to it than like your average hardware store axe. So the thought here was to use my angle grinder with a cutting wheel to plunge in up to my mark, leaving little fingers of metal behind. Then using a grinding disc, I just grind those little fingers away. By using that plunge cut to remove a lot of material in that depth, it makes it way easier for my grinder just to go up to that point that I want. This way I'm not grinding too far up into my mark and having to correct for that later on. Finally, I cleaned up that space with a grinding drum on my Dremel. So full disclosure, I saw my hatchet just kind of sitting amongst my camp things over here off camera right. And the idea for this project popped into my head. And I almost just popped it right back out of my head because I thought that that whole process here was gonna be really difficult to do and to make look right. I was wrong. In total, grinding this away, cleaning it with my Dremel, all of it, about a half hour, 45 minutes worth of work, this stuff cut like butter. And then after it was ground away and cleaned up, it looks like it came that way from factory. Like all the lines are perfect. The metal is nice and smooth. The transitions are nice. I, this isn't even me like patting myself on the back. Like it just, it just happened. Like it went really smoothly. So if you have an angle grinder, you should definitely give this a shot because it's really, really easy to do. Seriously, the most difficult time consuming part of this project was figuring out the designs I wanted to put into the thing. But before we get into that, I needed to get rid of this brand mark on the side. For this, I decided to use this abrasive buffing attachment that goes onto my Dremel. And it made really short work of the logo, but then it left like a telltale abrasion mark where it used to be. So I decided to hit the rest of the piece with it as well. Just kind of hide it in the rest of the noise. Then I sanded the whole thing with the 1500 grit sandpaper until I achieved a uniform shine. Cool, so now that the head is all prepped and ready, we can move on to the design. Okay, so because I do a show on the internet here, I didn't want to use somebody else's design for copyright purposes. So because of that, I just ended up freehanding a design. That being said, for your own private use, you could totally find something online that tickles your fancy and fits in that space and just print it out. I just wanted to give you the heads up because as I'm drawing this, you might be thinking to yourself like, oh, I can't draw, which is a side note. I think you can draw. I think you need to practice. Might be something we cover eventually. Anyways, to plan out my design, I first lay the head down on my sketchbook to trace the shape in. With that exact shape to go off of, I just kind of sketched around until I found a pattern that I liked. The thought here is to have all of this area knocked down and the design and the trim to remain raised and shiny. Now you might remember that I showed you a few episodes back how to etch a logo into a knife with a nine volt battery. In it, we were able to use printer ink to protect the areas that we don't want etched. To fulfill that same purpose in this project though, we'll be using some of this adhesive vinyl, usually used for like circuit cutters. I started by sticking a piece on the face of my hatchet, making sure to smooth out any air bubbles. Then I cut away the excess material. I also did the same to the reverse side, leaving me with two smooth faces to work with. It's at this point that some transfer paper would have been super useful. I don't have any, and all the stores that would have them are closed. COVID-19 thing, man. I'm running out of materials real quick. 
So I just used my initial drawing as a visual guide and replicate it as best as I could. If you're using a printout though, you could just use like a glue stick or something and adhere that onto the vinyl and then move on to the next little bit we're gonna go over. With my drawing in place, I used an X-Acto knife and cut along all of my lines. Then I carefully peeled away anything that I wanted to be etched, leaving what I wanted to remain untouched. Just go really carefully with this part as this is gonna determine how well your etching comes out. Speaking of etching, with our design in place and ready to go, we can move on to etching. So exactly like in the nine volt battery episode, our materials list include cotton balls, table salt, and water. For power though, I've decided to upgrade a little bit. To that end, I will be using this 12 volt car battery jump starter pack. Now I'm pretty sure you could still do this with a nine volt battery. I just think it would take a lot longer. Especially for that level of erosion that I wanted, I really wanted these little raised areas to be quite raised. And I just think that extra power output that that little jump starter has is what really made that go fairly quickly. First, prepare your electrolyte solution by adding just copious amounts of salt to a little bit of water. Next, connect your positive clamp to some exposed metal. Remember, this will not work if you connect the negative clamp. It has to be the positive. Now soak a cotton ball in your salt solution and secure it to the end of your negative clamp. Then power up your battery pack and press the cotton ball to the face of the ax. I left it in one spot for a count of 10 before moving on to the next. The reaction is instant, leaving behind a darkened and slightly corroded patch of metal. Quick safety note here, I noticed as I was doing this that the fumes it was causing was starting to burn my nose. I threw on a respirator and opened some windows and it took care of the problem right away. But just make sure you stay safe, stay protected, and make sure you're in a well-ventilated area if you wanna try this thing out. I don't know what that'll do to you, but with any project, if something doesn't feel right, always pay attention to it. Never try to muscle your way through it or whatever. You're not proving anything to anybody and you will hurt yourself. After about six passes on both sides, it was time for the moment of truth. And Shazam! I was crazy excited when I saw that gleaming metal underneath. And this turned out just way more perfect than it has any right to be. Like it's salt water and a battery pack I had in my garage. And it just turned into this. I mean, I'm, I don't know, man. I think it's great. And after hitting it with a bit of sandpaper, I was floored with how freaking lovely this looks. So you see stuff like this at like stores and online. And I don't know, I guess you just assume that it's way harder to make. But like if you got a half hour, some salt water and a battery. All right, I'll stop waxing all about this thing. I just, whatever, man, that got me. All right, so yeah, now that we've got this majestic beast in place, we can move on to handle it. Next, we need to sexy up our handle to complement our etched blade. For starters, I needed to get rid of this American Hickory stamp. My random orbital sander made super quick work of it, as well as any other finish that might've been on this handle. Then just as before, I decided to freehand a knot design in. Once I was satisfied, I busted out this little round engraving head and began cutting in my lines, following them as closely as I could. So now that little head is really good for just cutting in the lines, almost like you're drawing with a pencil, but to get the little areas that are in between the knot work here and also to get the sides so it looks like it's actually sticking out, I use this cutting bit. It just does a really good job of evenly removing material. It was also perfect for making it look like some of these lines were weaving beneath other lines. Finally, and most tediously, I sanded all of the little areas with some 400 grit sandpaper. The end result was this pretty raised knot work that you absolutely could not see because of the color of the wood. So to make it pop more, I busted out my trusty blowtorch and added some much needed fire to this project. I was actually surprised with how quickly this darkened up the design and I liked the look so much that I used it on the rest of the handle too. It just adds kind of like an aged, almost patinaed look that I, I really kind of enjoy. Finally, I grabbed some linseed oil and wiped it all along the handle to add some protection and make the grain pop. So after all that, I just wanted to add one more element to make the vision that's in my head manifest in reality. That is, of course, this leather hand grip. Now, this is apparently one of those things that I really like to do because I've gone over it a few times in other videos. So for a more in-depth look on how to do this, check out this video here. It'll go over the stitching and all that kind of stuff. But if the thumbnail of this axe is the thing that brought you here and this is the only video you wanna watch, here is the quick and dirty of how to do it. I started by wrapping the area that I wanted covered with the leather in plastic wrap and then a layer of tape. 
Then I cut along where I'd want my seam to go and remove the tape, which provided me with a template to measure my leather from. After prepping the leather and punching my holes, I locked it in place with some baseball stitches. The end result was just this perfectly fitted grip with an absolutely beautiful seam. So one more note on this. When you cut this leather, it's gonna be a little bit small. Because the tape is flat, it doesn't account for the thickness of the leather, which takes up some space when it goes around. That's okay though. Just make sure your leather is wet when it goes on. When it's wet, it becomes a little bit more stretchy and you're able to make that seam meet perfectly. Then when it dries, it shrinks a little bit and makes it so this is never moving anywhere. It fits perfectly. Now I must take an aside here to rant. Beautiful wrap I made, right? Somewhere in the process of me taking some photos of it, of, of you know sharpening the thing, which we're gonna go over soon. Look at this. Look at this stain right here. So. I have all my bottles of dye nicely put kind of just off camera over here. While walking by, this touched the very bottom of the cap of one that just happened to have a little bit kind of leaking out of the side of it. Anybody who works with dyes knows this. It's like everything is a magnet for the dye. It could be anywhere else in the room and you're gonna somehow either get it on yourself or get it on the project. Everything in me wants to cut this away and make another one because of those little stains right there. But I'm not gonna because I deserve it because I should have wiped off the bottle. Mm. Not only that, but this is gonna be like, is this, this is, I'm gonna use this thing. I'm gonna take this camping with me. It's gonna get messy. It's gonna get dirty. I can't be so precious with it. That just kills me inside though. Rant over. Now that we have the looks down though, we have to do something about the functionality of it. To that end, let's finish up this episode with sharpening. As I mentioned before, this came from the store Completely dull. No worries though. Sharpening an ax is actually pretty easy. For starters, I grabbed a flat file and began to taper out the edge a little bit. So from the store, this had an almost rounded edge. My goal with the file is to kind of thin it out a little bit more. Now this isn't like a knife. You don't want it really, really thin because it is gonna be striking like wood, right? It's, it's made to be beat onto something pretty hard. But the stupid rounded thing that it shipped with, just not gonna, literally not gonna cut it. <laughs> now you'd also use the file like this for taking out any nicks from an older ax or any rolled edges. This is basically the honing of a blade. And once that was where I wanted it, I began to actually sharpen the edge. All I had to do this was this three in one sharpening stone, but it actually worked really well. Just match the angle you established and rub the stone in a circular pattern along the length of the blade. Then work your way through the different grits your stone might have. Now I've seen a boatload of different ways to sharpen both axes and knives or anything. So if you know of a different way, um, you think it's better than this way, leave it down in the comments because I'd really like to hear it. That being said, within about 30 minutes, I was able to get this bad boy shaving sharp. And bam, the ax of pillaging is complete. Again, this thing just blows me away. It was super cheap and easy to make, but you cannot deny that looks slick, except for my stains. But seriously though, I am in love with this for something that was just kind of on a whim. Like I saw an ax sitting there and I'm like, that might make a fun episode. Let me give it a shot. I love this thing. This is gonna come with me camping. I, I wanna try LARPing at some point. And if they let me, I doubt they'll let me, right? This is a real ax. It's really sharp too. Well, clearly I love this project, but if you loved or just liked what you saw, why don't you give me some of that thumbs up love and do not forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also leave in the comments section if you have any skills you'd like to see me cover and I will add it to the list. All right, fam, well, I gotta get going. The wife and I are gonna raid, uh, I mean, ask the neighbors for toilet paper and hand sanitizer. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.